roll the burn cycle dice. Our aggressive action against them is to adjust the temperature. <laughs> you know how much you've been saying messing with the thermostat. I think he's yeah. playing like Galaga or something on there. <laughs> for the viewers and for just honesty, why don't you shake the bag without your hand in it? Just don't be a three or a four. <sighs> I had to say something. That is huge. Oh. I'm gonna bust the wall out. I'm gonna look at this bulldog and be like, watch this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Play the Game. I'm Daniel, this is Devin, and tonight we are playing a two-player game of Burn Cycle designed by Josh Carlson and Shannon Wedge and published by Chip Theory Games. And Devin is gonna tell us how to play. I'm gonna jump into this, let's go. This is Burn Cycle, a office crawler, not a dungeon crawler. Oh, there are no dragons, just fruit bowls and bathrooms. Fruit bowls and bathrooms. That is the tagline that you will remember forever. Should be. This is one to four players, it's a cooperative game, and in it you are going to be splitting your decisions across two spaces. A physical space, which is the corporate suites that you'll be moving up through one, two, or three floors, and then also the network, which is the digital space in which you're going to be kind of resolving IP movement and ping movement from both your side and the CEO or corporate side. We are the 404th Resistance, which is a group of robots who are trying to retake some of our source code and retake some of our autonomy in a world in which we brought back the humans and then they so very kindly made us second class citizens after they resumed the same kind of destructive behavior that they had before the world apocalypse happened that we resuscitated the world from. And apparently wiped out the other 403 resistances. Yes, but we're the one that's gonna succeed, are we, we are. not? Hopefully. Hopefully. So I in this so. <laughs> in this two player game, we are going to be doing a two floor scenario. That starts us off at a higher threat level than we already would have normally. And we also have very specific scenario objectives that we have to accomplish on the first floor and on the second floor. Whenever you have multiple floors, you have to achieve the objective on one floor and then progress to safe zones, which are highlighted in yellow. And once you do that, you move to the second floor, reset the floor plan based off of the floor plan book that we have, and then we're going to progress on the second floor. Once you complete whatever the last floor is, whether that's the first, second, or third, if you finish that final objective and meet the win condition, you win. If you reach the end of the failed mission track on the threat here, or if your command module gets shut down, those are ways in which you can have the mission fail otherwise. And in this game, after we complete all the win conditions in this mission, we get to blow a hole in the side of the building and jump out. It's going to be very action movie at the end for sure. Now. What you may see here is a fully set up scenario. The setup, while not complex, involves a lot of steps and we wanted to get right into the gameplay. Now, if you do wanna see a full setup video of this game, you can check that out. Devin has one on his channel, Devin Talks Tabletop. We'll leave a link to that below where he will walk through the entire setup of the game start to finish so you can see that in its entirety. Well, now I have a lot of social pressure to make that video. Before I do that though, I'm going to explain to you the concept of power just really quickly. Power is tracked on the neoprene mats here and on our command module. We each have a bot and then that's the command module that we can both control. Mm -hmm. But power is several things. It is either your health that you track as you get hit by guards, which when they pursue you, investigate you, they can attack you. It is also your dice pool, uh, your basic dice pool of these blue dice here. So if I'm at five, I have five dice that I can use on my turn. And then finally, it's the currency that you spend to upgrade your other aspects of your robot. So we started off with 10 power and I gave myself an advanced die and I gave myself a secondary chip to use. And then Daniel, what did you do? I also got an advanced dice. I upgraded my wall dissolve ability, which lets me if I blow through a wall, I can choose to not be noticed by guards. And then we also combined our power and one of Bit's power to unlock a third action on the burn cycle, which is going to be very helpful as we move. Now, Bit is our command module. Bit is a bot, but Bit is not an agent. We are agents. We are also all bots. So anything in the rules that say something that a bot can do, that includes your command module. If it says agents or agents have to do something like in our requirements, then an actual player has to do it. Sorry, I know that you've been like focusing on telling them what was going on. The whole time in my head, all I was listening to was anything a bot can do, Bit can do better. Yeah. I mean, yesterday, Bit did way better than you. That 
In I our, didn't realize we were going to harken back to that disastrous <laughs> to practice, practice game. game, and um, I'm a little sad now. It's so okay. we've discussed the fact of what our agents are doing, what our bot command module has going on, and now we can get into the first point in a game. This is the burn cycle. I'm going to be following it as the first player for my action selection. These are basic actions mm -hmm. that I can do unoptimized versions of all the actions in the game, the physical utility and tech actions. but we have both player reserves and team reserves here that at any point when we want to, we can alter the burn cycle. Now thematically, the burn cycle and our imperatives here are constraints. They force us to act in certain linear, like, you know, truncated fashions of this, 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 this. Trying to keep the bots down. Trying to keep the bots down. We can adjust it though. So as long as we're able to figure out an action process that meets those requirements or those restrictions, we can work within the burn cycle. But it is going to degrade at the end of each turn. So no matter how good we get it, it's going to continue to break down until yes. we can't fix it anymore. And then we have to reboot the burn cycle. And rebooting the burn cycle can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. It just mostly depends on where thing. you're at in the game. It's mostly a bad thing. <laughs> so we're going to get started. Mm -hmm. I, as Casey, have started here on this gray chip and I've started on this, which gave us that reserve chip. Bit, the command module has started here on this blue spot. And then Crash has started here on this physical chip. Now, even though Bit is over here with Devin, I can still Control. Control bit with my moves. You know, we, we have to share moves with bit. She doesn't have any individual actions of her own. Anything bot can do, bit can do better. Now, something bit does really well is unlock safe room doors. So that's why these green things right here signify that a door is unlocked. If we unlock a door, we will add that one to the door. These safe zones are all already unlocked because that is bit's ability. We've got two guards here in patrolling in the area and we are in the exterior. We've got one two, three entrances that we can try to hack through those doors. And then additional to that, we have the ability to bust walls, which is something he's really good for, but we'll get to that soon. Now, what is our objective? Because <clears throat> we didn't go through that. That's, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Daniel. One so thing gonna, you noticed is our objective just, One thing requires. I noticed is our objective, yes. which is how we win the game. All right, Daniel, what we need to do on this first floor is we need to go to the waste in the dynamo room. Where's that at? This is at? dynamo, this is waste. Okay, and once we're there, we need to go to the exclamation points. Right there. Okay, and then when we're at those points, we need to lock down that furnace that's thematically we're at that We're trying location. to turn off the heat in the office building. Yes, our Cause aggressive- it's, Cause it's our, winter and the humans will get cold. Our aggressive action against the them heaters. is to adjust the temperature. <laughs> You know how much humans hate messing with the thermostat. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna get them good. We're gonna get them where it hurts. Yes. Once we're there, we need to progress out of that location to safe zones. Well, first we need to we need to get there. We roll a four AP check. Yep. Anytime the game refers to AP, that is action points. That is the total of the dice of the numbers on your dice. So yeah, so we need to do that. We need to roll a four AP check here or here, and then we need to get to a safe zone. Now the second floor, we'll get into what our objective is on like once we get to that, but it requires us to be all in the same place. Oh, it does? It does. We need to be in the same place and do another AP check in the same room. So, so if we I, need to be in the same place on the second floor. We should all take the service elevator up together because that would get us all starting in the same spot yes. on the second floor. And then we can work through the second floor, do what we need to do there and just move together. That's not a bad idea. All right, I'm gonna jump in so that they can get a sense of how we play this game. You don't wanna talk for a long time about our strategy without actually doing anything? No, I want us to do that on the fly Okay. Uh, while we show them the game. Now question, is there a reason you have bit in front of you? I okay. do have bit in front of me for a reason. And okay. I'm going to explain it because when I was doing the floor plan, I noticed something unfortunate. Anytime you play a corporate game, you have the CEO, but they're just kind of like a thematic spearhead to this. They're not really in mechanical integration into what you're doing, but you do have captains and we have ours over there. His name is Crucible and he has got some wacky headgear. And this man, I thought what those he were does- feathers. They're not their saw blades. Yeah, ears. they're terrifying like ornamentations and prosthetic mods. They don't look comfortable. They don't. And what he does is whenever this captain ship activates, it actually makes guards move twice, um, oh, really only once. But I unfortunately have an imperative called double time, which is the next time the captain's burn cycle action happens on your turn, resolve its effect twice instead of once. But once that happens, 
you get two power and you get to discard that. You only have to do, do the imperatives once. But on my first turn, he's going to move to here, which is only three spaces away from the door. So if I open this door, he's going to find me immediately this turn. I'd rather come in to this door uh, okay. and You're come into this room. In this I'm not going in there, so I left the command module behind so he can follow oh, okay. along. So I'm going to go in this door here. Thank you for the explanation. It makes total sense now no to problem. me. No problem. No problem. I asked that for the viewers so that you could explain your reasoning. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm going to try and get two spaces to this door. I'm going to use three dice because I have an ability where blank dice allows my chamber dice, which is like my pressure valve generator. And that's good that I used it because I got two spaces, which is going to get me to the door. And then I got this blank, which I'm actually going to return to the supply along with those two and increase my chamber die to one. Now, normally you can take blank dice back. Devin is using that for his ability, but typically you can roll and any blank dice you get, you get to roll again. If they're on a number, if you over roll what you need, you don't get to take any of the number dice back, just the blank dice. True, true. And now we're gonna move to the second action, which activates the captain's ability. Good. So each security unit moves in the way that they're facing typically once, but because of my imperative, they're gonna move twice. And then I'm gonna get rid of this imperative, which is kind of nice. And then I'm gonna jump up two powers, which is also nice. The power you get is on the bottom of the card and you get <laughs> that when you complete the imperative. You can also discard the imperative at the cost of one power if it's something that is too cumbersome or you just aren't able to complete it and want to get rid of it. Yep. And now we're on my second action because we've resolved the captain's ability and I'm going to try and open this keypad. So what I need to do is I need to do a utility card and I need to see what are the requirements to get in here. It is to discard a physical chip mm. and because it says jam here, I cannot roll dice to brute force through the door. I'll grab one from the back. Which would typically show the fact that it says six AP there. That's how you know that you can roll action dice to get into that spot. And that is first, second, and third floor. And now floor I have, floor. because of how I started off, I have two physical chips. So I will actually discard yep. one of them so that we can get into this door. So I'm gonna get rid of that keypad and I have effectively opened the door, which means now I'm gonna move in here. What is your imperative? My imperative says until your agent next enters an unsurveilled room, the surveillance option cannot be selected on terminal cards by any bot on your team. So terminal cards have three different options of things you can do. So if one of these was surveillance, that is one that you could not choose until I go into an unsurveilled room, which I will hopefully do on my first turn. I am going to take the free action. Anytime you open up a door, you can take one free movement into that space and then you surveil what's going on in there. There's only one dice that's gonna be rolled on this particular location. So I'm just hoping that we don't have a guard pop up in that spot. Yes, That's my hope. And, and we had do. a guard pop up in yeah, that spot. Had that's to say great. something. I, yeah. So we're gonna take a level one guard. If you can see, it's probably hard on the camera, but this does have an arrow. This guard is just gonna be, I guess there's a little monitor there. He's not staring at the wall. Yeah. And the direction the guards are facing is shown by this blue arrow right here. That is very important. The guards have two icons on them. They have their, their movement distance and their awareness. Awareness is in a straight line. So this bot can see eight straight in front of him. Any peripheral awareness is half of that. So like this bot can see six in a straight line, but it could see one, two, three away from it because three is half of six. So if I was right here, even though this bot has an awareness of six because it's not in a straight line, I would be out of its awareness here. And thankfully, because he is facing that yes. way, I am one, two, three, four, five spaces instead of four spaces away. So casing this lumbering giant of a robot is unseen as he lumbers through the door, which is good. I think what I'm gonna do for my last action is I'm going to just try to move bit closer to either me or you? Yep. Or do you think I should take a network card? I'd take a network card. Yeah, let's, okay let's show the outside. viewers what the network card does. And I think if I'm going up there to do that, I think you and bit might be best served to go and try and collect some of these caches. So we have these orange chips. If you move over them, that is a cache. You get an equipment card. That's gonna help us probably most likely they're beneficial things. So that might help us on the second floor since we only have one objective to complete on the first floor and I'm going that direction to do that. If y'all load up on equipment. And load up some, on equipment. And do some terminals. 
That Do some terminals. Helpful. All right, give me a network card for my last action. Here's a network card for your last action. Oh, I'm not going to be able to complete no. this one because this is in the third layer. This is fantastic, though, because I've finished my actions and I can show you what the network is. The network is the digital space in which we as robots function. It is de separate, detached from what you're doing here on the board, but it is connected both thematically and also mechanically because network cards connect and point to spaces on this map and then also what happens on here can affect both the threat in the game and then also the power of the robots, depending on where you land. It is something that we will resolve every turn for ourselves. And then also on the corporate side, they will resolve it on their turn. So we take three actions. They, they usually will associate with upgraded or specific action chips in here, but because all three of these are general, that means that we're just gonna be moving one space at a time. We're not gonna be jumping to particular chips of a type. So if there's a purple chip here on this move, you would go to the next purple space. Or the nearest hub if yes. it interrupted you. So I am the yellow uh, IP ping here. I'm going to transfer in and a transfer can happen at one time on each of these movements if I want to. So I'm gonna transfer in for free and then I'm gonna take my first action here and move to this green. Then I'll take my second action and move to this hub, which is going to allow me to increase my network die. And then I'm going to move to this third hub for my third action. Now the network dice, the reason you're adding those is eventually those red pings for the CEO are going to come in and start moving around the network. When, when one of our IPs runs into a ping from the CEO, whoever us or the CEO has the higher number on the network dice wins that battle and sends the ping back or we go back to our starting spot. But, we send that yeah. ping back. But we want to have that higher number because we don't want to get hit by the pings. Mm -hmm. because and the reason why I said that this network card was useless is because it relates to this uh, blue utility node on the third layer. And I just started the game, yeah. so I'm on the first layer. I have not transferred into inner mower layers yet, so it's not useful to me, and I just discard it at the end of my turn. I have finished the network phase and now I go back to route power. Now, because I followed my imperative, I got some extra power, which I'm actually going to get rid of it by giving myself another advanced die. So I have finished as casing and now the next thing I'm going to do is degrade the burn cycle. This burn cycle here, it has three actions because we upgrade it, it normally just starts with two. Every single turn for us as the agents, we will degrade the burn cycle, which means we will lose actions unless we spend our own physical tech or utility chips to increase or upgrade the burn cycle. I roll. Yes. That's fantastic luck because I just rolled number two, which degrades the captain chip. Sweet. Typically, you would have to spend uh, one of your chips to replace that, to alter it. And if it was on its active side and you chose to get rid of it, you would actually increase the threat. But yeah. now, because of the fact that it's degraded, we can swap it out and it doesn't cost anything. Which means until we reboot the burn cycle again or move to the second floor, is that right? Yep. Or is it just when we reboot the burn cycle? Just rebooting the burn right. cycle. When we reboot the burn cycle, this will come back out. But until then, we no longer have to do the captain's action. So we won't be moving the security one space. So I have finished my turn. It is now Daniel's turn. And you can alter the burn cycle okay. before you get started. So I'm going to use our shared utility chip because I need to move. And these you have to use these in order. So I need to move. And then, and then I need to the unlock door. that door. So the utility chip is going to let me ignore one input on a keypad. So I'm going to swap this out with that. Mm -hmm. This goes back into the supply. I have six dice and one advanced dice. I'm going to roll. So I need to move one, two, three, four. I'll mm -hmm. roll. A decent amount of your dice. Yeah, I'll roll, <laughs> I'll roll three of my dice and including the advanced dice just to see if I can get four. I got two, but I get to take these back. This is not great. No, it's not great. You can turn it into three, or you could probably just, you may just need to do another yeah, physical I'm move. Yeah, I'm gonna do another physical move. So what he was saying is if you have two blank dice, you can turn in two blank dice that you roll for a one, but I don't wanna do that because that doesn't get me, if I had rolled three and two blanks, I probably would because that gets me where I need to, to the go. Door, yeah. But I'm gonna roll three and see if I can get there again. That kills my- Whole turn. My whole turn. <laughs> Okay, so now I rolled four. One, two, and we can now move bit if yep. we want to for the rest of yeah, those we'll two move movements. Bits, use that to move bit. Now I go to my last turn where I need to unlock the door. Now here's what we can hope. I is still that, have three left. Yeah, here's, I mean, we can hope that there are some keypads that don't require anything. So we can yep. hope that we get lucky. 
This requires adding a ping to the network. And you can't bust it. You can't brute force it. Right. So we are going to have to do that. Which is okay. Now one ping isn't that bad. Yes. Yeah, so we add one ping. That door is now unlocked. And then you are going, do you want to take the free action to go in? Uh, yes, I would like to do that. Now, when you attempt to unlock a door, if you fail, that keypad is there until it's unlocked. So yep. you can't just keep punching in different codes, hoping that one eventually works. Okay, so I am done with my turn. But you're gonna push in? Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and step in so I don't get to use my last three dice. It's okay, I didn't get to use mine, but you do get to surveil a room, which means your imperative is gonna go away. So because this has two dice here next to the name, I roll two surveillance dice. Just don't roll two guards. I'm going to do my best not to. Just don't, oh, just. Yeah, I did one. And you got a power. And I got a power. And then second power, because yes. you met your imperative. So we're doing good. One but we did dice, get one guard, that. which we'll go to A first. Yes. And how much? Oh, what's thank his goodness. Okay. Super low awareness. He's at level. So because he can see two in this direction, but, but he, he can only see one, see one in, and not in, in these other. So you could actually skirt along the outside. I could. Now these are humans inside mech suits. That's why they look like robots also. Yes. They're humans in mech suits, which apparently makes them not be able to hear really well. And they haven't developed the ability to like have effective radar. They talk to each other, than, though, pretty effectively. But they can't see me more than one space. I'm not complaining. I'm just commenting. So if you were in like an 800-pound mech suit, are you saying that your sense of awareness would be massive? No, but I think heightened? I could have a screen that said there's a giant robot behind you. You just got a we'll backup back. cam? You got a backup yes. cam? Yes. On your yes. Mech suit. <laughs> All right. So you've gained your extra power. You've uh -huh. surveilled the room. You're at the end of your turn. He does not have an awareness of you. So you need to do the network yep. phase and then so you're going to transfer in. in. I am going to transfer. I I have to, right? <laughs> and you're going to move once yep. to increase your network level. And that was for the, again, the transfer in is a free action. And then do you want to move here or do you want to transfer in and then move here? I don't have a network card, so I have no reason to, to move in. To move in. He's moving directly to the nearest utility chip based off of that blue icon, which is Happens yeah. to be in the next space. And then you're gonna move one more. One, two, three. Yep. Okay, so it's time for me to route power. So I'm going to spend two and override because we were gonna to have to unlock some doors in order to do some things. So, so well said. <laughs> override lets me when I brute force a keypad and try to roll to get it, I may add two AP to my roll. So I'm gonna do that. And now we degrade the burn cycle. Rolling a question Ooh, we mark. get to pick. So let's pick not the blue one. Okay, so strategically, what are you going to do on your turn? I can't move in here without him detecting me. Right. But I need to clear out some space in here. What if you degrade the last one to where I will move and I'll try to get close. And if I have any extra, I'll move him close to this door. Yeah, I think having the most dice when you attack him is probably because you have to roll 10. So I could just do a network action here. Yeah. And then... Yeah. So you I want to degrade the degrade first one? Degrade the last one. The, the last one? I want my last one to be an optimized attack. Oh, optimized attack. I was thinking optimized move. Okay. So we're going to degrade the last one. Yep. And now it is the corporation's turn. So, yes. So we're going to activate the security units. They activate one at a time based on this icon at the bottom of their security unit. And only the ones in the hallways, if the ones on security posts are there. But yes. no one's aware of anybody. No right one's now. pursuing, no one's investigating. So we're just jumping yes. straight to patrol. So hamster, this icon means that he walks in a straight line until he hits a wall and then turns around and walks back, which is good because he's just going to hang out in this little corridor here. For now. He, he move, hamster moves two. So we do one, two. And then and he's, he's just going to He's going to keep his wall. facing there until he yes. moves next. Now, Walker moves counterclockwise around the building. So if you visualize that. He's already come down, and because he's facing this way, he's gonna go that way. This is Ouija board, right? <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We did it, Devin. We Ouija board guard movement. Now so, that's actually really good for me because I've gotta get out there and he's facing away from me. The next thing that we need to do because we've activated the security units is we've gotta activate pings. So there is a ping here in the core, which means we now move them one, two, three places. If any amount of them were on hubs, you would roll the ping die as many hubs were occupied. But because no hubs are occupied and there is a 
ping here that is able to transfer out. They're gonna progress outward and we're gonna progress inward. And now we have to advance our threat. We started at eight and we're gonna drop nine, 10. And it's at level nine, person. we degrade the leftmost active chip in the burn cycle. So now here's you, actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do physical, physical. You can replace physical. both, yeah. yeah. You can replace yeah. both. You can replace as many in the burn cycle as you want. You just have to have, have, to have the chips to do it. I might have an effective turn. And I'm going to alter the burn cycle twice and get rid of both of these general action chips, and I'm gonna get two physical chips. I'm gonna take a physical action, which gives me two already, so I can get to at least here. Bit I'm gonna in. move in with a one, two, three value of movement, plus my two optimized with the physical chip, and I'm gonna go one, two, Total three, five. four, five, and then I'm going to actually take this die back into the supply. He is aware of you now. Oh, yes, you're right. Because He's you now aware of me, because he, as soon as I moved to this space, he became aware of me, and my awareness went with me as he, as I moved, because He still he hasn't aware. turned around to face you yet. He's not, it's but just, in, my, in his something. backup cam, he just in his backup something. cam, I'm, I'm there, yeah. I'm visible. Yeah, he's beeping right now. And ignoring it. And ignoring it. <laughs> Until it's his time to move. So, I'm gonna take a unoptimized network action for my secondary one, so I don't use any dice. And hey, a level, a layer one, I might be able to get that. All right, now I'm gonna do this strike action, which is a physical action in which I get a plus two bonus. So I wanna get somewhere between five and 10 to either stun the guard or shut him down. I've got a plus two already, and hopefully, I don't think mathematically. You could, you could. I could get really lucky. Yes. You probably but won't. I don't feel lucky. What'd you get? I got five, seven. So I got not enough to shut him down and remove One him. Away. So this guard is now stunned, which means they will not activate in this next phase. Unfortunately, it means another guard's gonna come in to try to find me okay, because I have an awareness still that's still there. there. But this guard won't mess with me and it's done for now. And maybe I could start my next turn and oh, take yeah. one out with a bunch of dice. Yeah. Now that I'm done with my actions, I'm gonna go to my network phase in which I resolve actions just the same on the burn cycle track. I'm gonna go to the first purple one, which moves to here, and I'm going to increase my network to one, or to three, not one, and then I'm going to move to the second one, which on this node, this utility node, I have now gone to a node that matches both the layer and type of this, and it allows me to draw a mod card, there which is go. nice. A wireless charger. When a keypad shocks your agent, they may gain a power instead of losing a power. So with mods, you get them, but they're not automatically installed. You actually have to pay the power cost to install them and then use them. But you can, if you want to, just discard them uninstalled and gain that power value. So I'm gonna get rid of that mod card, bump up to six power, but not use it. Now I move to the last stage of this and I will actually jump over him and move to this purple spot here on the outside. And then I'm done with my network and I route power, which I'm gonna choose not to do, so I save dice for next time. And then I'm going to degrade the burn cycle, which degrades five, which so cycles back one, to one. Yep. That's that. So now it is my turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to route power. I'm not gonna route power. Let me get rid of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one here so I can take a network card and take another unoptimized action. So my network card, I can do that one too. Now I just need to move one space over to that. I'm gonna use the terminal because I will still be out of his awareness. So please don't go blank. Whew. Okay, I rolled a one. On the terminal. On the terminal. I'm going to use the terminal. So I need to draw a terminal card. Yep. So the terminal cards give you three different options of what you can do. So on the network, I can move my IP to the next hub clockwise on its current network layer for two AP. I can unlock a door of my choice for three AP. I'm Ooh, going to do that. Yeah. And then surveillance, I can surveil a room of my choice. I'm going Unlocking to a room. unlock a door of my choice. Um, let's unlock that one. Uh, in case you need to exit. Yeah. You I'm gonna to be three. generous. Yeah. If you roll a blank, you can get it back. Yep. And you got four. Good. Nice. So let's go ahead and unlock this one right here. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Because one of us needs to get there. Okay, now I'm going Agreed. to move. I get two extra move actions or two extra move points because it is in a physical action. Do you want to move that way? Yeah, I'm going to go around the outside. So I get two, three, four, five total. So one, one and this is gone yep, because you've gone. used it. Two, three, but you do pick up an equipment card. Yep. And then four, five. Just go ahead and bring me to right there. Okay. So 
Guess okay, so my, I got the trip lock. During your keypad action, your agent may roll this die to ignore up to that number of inputs on the keypad card. That's nice. Yes. And you don't have to pay to use these, you just get to use them. So this is an equipment dice. You'll notice on here that it's got a number value, a symbol, and then a smaller icon here. The eight just relates to which card that was that was just pulled. The one signifies that that's how many inputs he can ignore. And then if you go to one of these other sides here, it shows a two and a two and a three, but it also shows this exclamation point. That means that you would be able to ignore a higher number of inputs, but afterwards, you would have to discard this equipment. You wouldn't get it anymore. If you roll on the lower sides, you get that lower value, but then you keep the equipment card as long as you keep mm -hmm. rolling, not that breakable I icon. I definitely knew that. You definitely knew I that. I definitely knew that you, you get definitely got it. that equipment now. Yay. So I have gone through all of my actions and it is now time for me to do my network action. Mm -hmm. So I go to the next green. So which takes you to this hub yep. and you increase your network. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the next blue, blue, which is all the way over here. And now I get to draw a mod card because nice. that was my network What'd action. You get? I got Expando Trash. At the end of your turn, if your agent is not detective, you may treat their current space as a hiding spot until the start of your next turn. Place an objective bead on your agent to indicate this. Cool. So hiding spots are these spots that have the little blue eyes there. You're not detectable in those spots. So this means if I was undetected at the end of my turn, I could use this. And then if a guard patrolling got within range of me, nice. I would not be seen. That's always, that's uh, a pretty, yeah, that's a useful say, yeah. ability. So now it is the corporation's turn. So the security units activate. So this guard is closer. So we're gonna move this okay. guard. So he's going to turn and come in one, two, and he's going to be adjacent to me and have me within his awareness. And because of that, he's going to attack and that's gonna drop my power from six to five. Yep. Now, because he has investigated and then attacked, my awareness flips over. I'm not allowed to be investigated or pursued anymore this turn. Mm -hmm. So this hamster just goes and Turn resumes his walking. regular patrol, which was to ping between two sides. Yep. Why did that hit me for one power? Guards hit based off of their floor level or their level of security. This is a level one, so he hits for one power. So thankfully this didn't hit me for too hard. But it also has an ability called Drain, which thankfully does not affect me. Drain usually means once they get adjacent to me, they take a chip, a power chip out of my reserve, which I don't have one. So which isn't a great thing. It's not a but great thing, okay but it doesn't hurt me right now. Yeah. So we're now going to activate the pings. They're going to go one, two, three spaces. And then for every ping that's at a hub, which is one right now, we will roll and resolve the ping die. Increase that threat. is increasing the threat to 11 which unfortunately activates the oh. pollutant dump. Degrade two active chips of the team's choice in the burn cycle, and then the CEO adds two pings to the core, then activate all pings. That's a lot of stuff. We got We have to degrade two of those. We do. Okay, we should I, degrade the first two, I think, I think because I need a physical action. I do too. So we'll degrade these two. I'll swap this one out. So is that the end of the, we need to add two <laughs> no. more to the board? Yeah, we have to add two pings to the core and then they're all going to activate. So this one is going to move one, two, three spaces here. It's gonna move one, two. This is gonna move one, two. And because they're not at hubs, they, they transfer out if able. This one is blocking this. So they just move out right there. That was that was rough. That was rough. That, that was, was not a good network turn. We want zero to no pings on the board. All right, so that was a pretty debilitating corporation turn. Awareness is flipped over again. This, this guard is stone. back, but he's still facing that hey, way. Hey, Devin, yeah. you should leave that room. I need to knock out one of them first, though. Man, this is not great for me. I have one action, but I... All I can do is spend all Luckily, of my- it's a physical action. It so is a physical can, action. I'm going to- throw fisticuffs. I'm gonna throw fisticuffs. I've got all of my stuff. It's gonna give me a plus two. I've got to get <laughs> at least eight. Yeah. Two, four, six, six eight, we ten. We did it. You did it. And I can't, I don't have another action, so I might as well use yeah. this to increase my chamber die. Which and you can tra trade in your chamber die for movement? On a movement turn, yeah. yes. So I'm going to shut down because at level one, they have a strength value or resistance of 10. At level two, 15. At level three, 20. So. so this one is dead now and it's off of the map and I get a power 
for taking it Shutting out. Him down. So I go he's up to dead, six he's now. Shut down. I have taken that out, but I still have awareness because I just in the backup cam of this bulldog, yes, you're there. they just saw a massive pile up in the rear view mirror. And it's still beeping and he's still just looking calmly. I think he's yeah. playing like Galaga or something on there. <laughs> he he's really focused. Game, he don't know what he's doing there. But I am done. So yeah, I am right network. here. And I'm going to go to the nearest purple, but that's actually going to be okay with me. That's the hub. I'm going to go here and increase my network value. Now I need to get rid of my dice and roll the burn cycle. Roll the burn cycle dice. Not over there. It doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm rolling. It's only going to degrade that one. So degrade, degrade that one. Okay. Now here's the thing. It might make sense for us to... No, I'm reboot. Gonna, no, give me give me a minute. I have a plan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I only have one action. It is a physical action. I get two automatically. So I'm not even going to roll this turn. I'm just going to use that to to move here. Take this. I get equipment. What is it? When your agent is attacked by a security unit, you may discard this equipment to reduce the power loss by up to two. That's not bad. I don't plan on getting attacked. Though. Famous last words. <laughs> so I'm going to discard the expando trash. I'm going to get two power from it. I'm going to keep this one. So I go to seven, eight. I'm over there. I'm going to use my free action, which is a breaching charge. And I have my wall dissolve, which means that I do not get, I am not detected. That's the word I'm looking for. So that goes there. There is now a hole in this wall. I am not detected. I'm outside of his range still because he can only see one peripherally. You're going to network? Yes, to the next purple. Okay, so you have done your network phase yes. and now we need to route power and you are over your yes. limit of so seven. I, so so I what do you to wanna do? Power. One, we have to reboot the burn cycle because we're out of moves. So we're gonna move up to threat and at the end of our turn, we're gonna move up to, so we are about to trigger deregulation what? where we deactivate, Ooh. not degrade. We completely lose the first slot in the burn cycle. So, Which is expensive to yes. get back. So in order to maintain the number of moves that we have, I'm going to spend two. Bit is going to spend one and we are going to unlock this fourth one right there. We don't clever get a chip girl, there. Clever girl, clever girl. Do we get a chip there right now? You know, the Jurassic Park yeah. anyone? Yeah. You just didn't even respond to it. I'm asking if we get a chip there. No, not right now. Okay. We won't get one until, until we reboot yeah. the burn cycle or until you could put a chip there, but it doesn't automatically get one. Yeah. Okay. So now we degrade the burn cycle and now you have no moves. So why don't we reboot the burn cycle before we do the corporate yes. phase? Because there is technically a chance that we could, that the captain will go out on the first yeah. slot. That would be nice if we could deactivate. Yeah, let's reboot it and see if we can get them gone. Okay, so how do we reboot the burn cycle, Devin? Why don't you walk us through that process? Get rid of those chips, and then with the amount of slots that we have left, we get three basic actions and then the one captain action. So give me give me those. Who feels better about drawing? I will. First? Okay. I will. Well, just because the last time we... For the viewers and for just honesty, why don't you shake the bag without your hand in it so we know you're not palming the captain ship. First off, the fact that you think I have the ability to palm is a really nice compliment. I think highly I appreciate you that. I, I, in your dishonesty. I I'm going to take this one. Uh, uh, obviously weren't palming it. Uh, oh, man. It one off. One off. Oh, well. Now, we get our reserves that we have personally. I get two purple and you get one purple. Now, we also get one for each room that we are in based on the icon on the room. Would have been nice if we had just brought bit one space in at some point. <laughs> we had thought ahead about that. So we get, we have lots of movement. Lots of physical. Which right now, that's physical. what we need to do. Physical. Okay. We've rebooted, but we need to make sure that we bump the threat up twice, which deactivates fully that slot, which is not not ideal. Yeah. Would have been nice to not start off with the captain. Yeah. But, but we had a chance if you had drawn better to not have the captain Seems like at all. you're blaming me. I'm not, I'm just Seems stating like you're that. blaming me. Just now we're gonna move that. to the security unit activation in the corporation hey, turn. Hey, let's take our humans. The humans are bad. Yeah, the humans not, are bad. He's gonna turn around and he's gonna go keep it at the humans, boink no and at a value of one, he's going to boink me down to five. And then I am no longer going to be pursued. And then now we're gonna move, skip the investigation side and move to patrol. And this hamster is really deeply treading. He really wants there to be something. Of, 
over in that, here that yes. he can go investigate. Yes. Now we have come to the end of the security unit activation. We now activate one, two, oh, so I was three. Distracted by your noises. My noises. My bing. Your sound effects. One, two, three. Yeah. I'm really good at those. One, two, three. We have one person at a hub. Does he not so stop at a hub? Oh, they yes, move, you're yeah. right. They stop. At yeah, the they hub. move three or until they get to a hub. So these we need there. to make those mistakes on purpose like we just did so that we can teach the viewers the things to notice about the game. That was a really good on teaching purpose moment. mistake. It's a on really good purpose teaching mistake. moment. All right, we roll it twice. That increases the threat by one and it makes all of them transfer out if they're able, if they're able to. And then we roll a second dice for the one that was here. And they also transfer out again and if we able add a to, ping. and we add a ping to the core. Because this ping was added to the core, it also transfers out based off of that choice there. So we've got a lot of pings to deal with. And then the last thing, we advance the threat again, which activates this level 17 piece, which is all agents that do not have an imperative draw an imperative, which is now both of us. Yes. There's your imperative. Thanks. How good is it? Your agent may not use brute force on a keypad until after the next time they successfully unlock a door. That's fine. Now, the next time my agent takes a keypad action, they cannot use brute force. Luckily, our doors are all unlocked. <laughs> so I think we're actually okay on that. So it is your turn. It is my you need turn. to get out of that room. I do, and I need to kill him to You're do it. You're just gonna kill him first? I'm gonna just kill him first, which sounds aggressive. I'm actually, oh, I, I can't, I can't mess with the captain ship. Okay, so we have to activate the captain ship first. So we move each security unit one space in the direction they're facing. And that does that. Which still keeps me out of its awareness. And because this bulldog is facing me and it has nowhere to move, it doesn't move, the hamster doesn't move, and the walker over here was the only one that shifted off of their post. Yep. I need to do something. Just attack him this turn and then spend your time. That's yeah. the most yeah. logical thing. Oh, wait. Oh, I can't, I can't. Because it's not a movement action. I can't optimize it by altering the burn cycle because that would advance our threat by two. Do you want to just spend... Oh, do a network and alter that yes, one. Yes, alter that yes, one. Yes, that's so oh, So you're we're so just, smart. so we lose this, like, Un lose Undegraded chip. Yes, an undegraded chip. But I'm going to just take a yeah. network, network card. Yeah, so we're going to take an unoptimized network action. So now that I'm on my second action, I get plus two, which means I might have a chance of actually like yeah. shutting them down and getting them out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got him. So he's out of here. I'm still aware because when you shut down a robot, people know about it. But I do bump up back to six on my power. And for my final one, for my vinyl trick, I will just take another, another network card, card to okay. see what I've got. A level okay. two and a level three. I'm going to now do my networking phase. So I'm yellow. I need to move one for the captain's chip. And then I could enter into this spot here. I'm going to go purple, which takes me to this hub, which actually decreases yes, threat, that's which is something we really need right now. Yeah. If we can cycle in the second level, yeah. uh, if you can hop in, because yeah, you're can above hop in, them too. Yeah. And then the last thing, I'm, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to ignore that. You can choose to pass and not move. You don't want to block me from moving in. I don't want to block him from transferring yeah. in so that he could try to maybe wipe out some of these pings. Yeah. Okay. So that's the end of your turn. You need to degrade the net or degrade the burn cycle. Now we have good two. odds of getting, if we roll a five or a one or a two, just don't be a three or a four. <sighs> Had to say something. I always feel like it needs to be said though. You need to say it. Okay. So I'm going to route power. I'm not going to route power. I don't need to route power. I'm going to do that. I do a physical action. Everyone is going to move one direction. Everyone is facing walls. You need to get in through this door. I know. Do you think you can make it all the way to where I, you don't do another physical action? I do. I do think that. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, okay, so I got four. So one, one, two, two three, three, four. four. Now I have a, an optimized action. Of I was one, really two. Hoping I'd get more. I'm just going to roll them all and try to get to that space. Yeah, you might as well just roll them all. Okay. One, two, three, four. No, so are gonna, you going to turn it into oh, five? Oh, no, that's one, two, three, four. And then that would be five. That would be five. So you're just going to do yep. that. So the first thing we're going to do is as soon as you come in, we've got to it. see what is in here. Don't be power. <laughs> hey. There's yeah, no mainframe there's no in there. no mainframes in there. So, But it wasn't a guard. Three, four, five. Oh, it wouldn't have been a guard. Oh, it would have been a guard. Yikes. 
So you are now in there. We see what Hold is on. in there. I'm gonna, I was right there. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, so that I pick this up. As a free That's action, a you point. may place your agent's awareness chip on point. an adjacent space until the end of the round. Security has no awareness of you. I like this better than... Than the helmet? You just, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. yes. If you don't think you're gonna get hit, then. I'm not gonna get hit. I don't plan on it. And then I'm going to use my last, just physical optimized movement to move one, two, and now I can do that on our next turn. Now I do my network, so I move, I'll move Transfer in, in transfer and in then and move, move one, one and hit that, which yep. drops them back and brings your dice down to two. Mm -hmm. And then you're now gonna go move to purple. purple, which hits this, brings your dice down to one and clears that one out. Yep. And then I go to purple again. And I'm not really at risk of anyone transferring out behind me. That was really good. So now we need to do the corporation, corporation turn, turn after you degrade the burn cycle. After I degrade the burn cycle, let me roll a one, two, or five really quick. Yay, we get to See, choose. That's how you do it. You say what you want, not what you don't want. You did it the opposite way last time. You said, "Don't give me power. Don't give me power." That uh, and did it? Did it work? You you wanted did, power, you didn't want the guard. And it didn't work. I wanted power, I asked for power, I didn't get power. Corporation turn. First part of the corporation turn, security unit activation. I have taken care of the two guards who came and accosted me, but now, because the awareness is there, because their fellow guards are gone, someone has to activate it. This guard is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven away. This guard is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight away. This walker is going to move first. You're going to progress one, two, three, four to get closer to my awareness. That has now been investigated, not pursued because I wasn't within their awareness, which means we move to the patrol phase and this hamster turns around and continues ping-ponging off those walls. We activate pings now. This moves one, two, three spaces. This moves one, two, three spaces. None of them are on hubs, so they both transfer out. Final thing we gotta do though is advance the threat. No, now, I was hoping we would. We hit this corrosion upgrade, which is when rebooting the burn cycle. Agents no longer get chips in their reserve. Instead, for each room occupied by bots, which is typically how you add the team reserve, now you add two corresponding chips to the team's reserve. So we really need to make sure that the next time we reboot, we have to be in rooms we're not just or we're hallways. not gonna have anything yeah. to do. So yeah, we still have to go to the second floor, so we need to do some second ring network action so we can reduce yes. the threat. Which is gonna be for sure you, and then I yeah. won't be able to reach it until, oh, we I guess to, I could We skip also you. need to get to the second floor. Yes, that so. is part of the fun. I now flip this over. It is going to be reinvestigated later, and it is my turn, and we route power. I'm not gonna route power. I've got six dice and two advanced dice. So I'm going to swap this out. I'm just gonna move two, and then the reason why I'm doing that is I can't use brute force on a keypad until after the next time they successfully unlock a door, so I'm just gonna use all of my action, I think, on the so last one. See what movement. it is, maybe it'll be free. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Oh, it's out of pain. Out That's of pain okay. to the core. Not That's the worst better thing. than spending dice, because now yes. you Now I can do a full physical move and get all of them out with all yeah. of my dice. So that was your second action, or no, that was your that second That was my action. second yep. action. Now we go to the final yep. action there. You have two to start with. I need to put in a door icon to say that that's unlocked now. And I can actually take a free action out. Now let's get out of here. I can also, if I ever need extra movement, I have my pressure chamber. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with the optimized chip. So let's see how much this takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is what I'm at. Yep. And then I'm actually gonna decrease my, or should I? So on your turn, you have three actions. You're gonna be doing the AP roll. Right. And then you're going to be just getting there. Yeah. So I could save this. Yes, you can save that. I'm gonna get this blank back here and increase this to three in case I need it later. Cause okay. I think you should be able to hopefully bring bit and bring bit in. Yeah. If I get bit in the elevator and I'm standing outside the door at the end of my turn, you're going to be upset. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little peeved. Well, actually, actually, you know, the thing we need to do is we need to get done. So I, I'll, I'll use that. Okay. I'll use that. And I'll bring then bit I just in. have to move. You bit just have to get one in. out of the way. 
I need to do my network action now. So I'm gonna go yep. to this purple spot and then I'm gonna transfer in. And then I'm gonna go to purple or the next hub here and gain a power. And then I'm gonna transfer out and with my last purple, I'm gonna come here and decrease the threat by now, one. I think this is the first time this has happened in the game where you would, I am on the first purple, you completely ignore that one. It's like- I jump over you. You jump yeah. over it and, and act like that space isn't there. Yes. So that's yes. why you went past that. So I got up to seven on my power with the network phase, hopping into that hub. And then I actually am gonna jump up to eight because I followed my imperative. I did not use brute force until the next time after I unlocked a key bad. So I get a plus one there. Now I'm still within my minimum as casing, but you're I'm almost guaranteed to, yes. to get the objective, which will give us four power. So I should at least spin down to six. Yeah. So that I can get the full value of what you're about to do. I could really make my pressure chamber a little bit more dynamic in the stuff that I could do, or I could simply get another advanced dice. I would get dice. So I'm, I'm gonna get another dice. Yep. All right, okay. And now I degrade the burn cycle. So let's see which one I degrade. Okay, so Two. it's a physical one. Physical, okay. physical. So that is the end of your turn. I'm done, you're up. Okay. Are you gonna route power? I'm going to not route, not power. route power. Are you gonna alter the burn cycle? I am gonna alter the burn cycle. Look at that. Yep. And I'm going to blow a hole in this wall. Silent. Cause you have to do free actions either at the beginning of your turn or at the end of your turn. Yep. Not in between actions. So now I need to roll a four in order to complete our objective. Oof. Okay, I did it. I that was six. you most certainly went m way over, but that's okay. But I did it. You did it, and that's what matters. That so you have successfully matters. locked down the furnace room. So which now we gives get us four, four power. power. So I'm going to hop up to my maximum. I have ten dice and three I advanced dice. I have ten dice. power too, but I'm going to have to spin down. Yeah. Okay. So now I need to move. I get two automatically. Mm -hmm. So four, six. Six. So you're going to move one, two, three. And four, and at this point, He's your awareness aware goes on. And I go five, six, five, and leave six, that there. and leave that there. And I, then you need. <laughs> I can move two more. So yeah, but you don't have any more dice. I don't have any more dice. But one, two. But when he investigates that, I'm still out of it's his gone. Yes. yes. So we are just shy of the service elevator, and the it's reason okay. why we're all piling in here and not anywhere else is because on our mission card it does say that in the second floor we need to all be in the same room when we do this same lockdown procedure. So to us, it just kind of made yeah. sense to be in the same starting point so that we could all progress to the same room, but we're just shy, that's okay. But we, we are at the point where you need to network. Part. Yeah, so you're yeah. going to, for purple. the first one, go to purple, and then you're going to go and hit this ping and stop there, and this ping goes back and you drop down to a one, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna go to purple, which goes to this hub yeah. and decreases threat. That is good because yeah, we need to not. We are gonna go to the same point we were at the big end of the last turn, which is, that's good, that's yeah. good. We're, we just don't wanna pro keep progressing further closer to the mission failed. We now have the point at which we degrade the burn cycle. What type of chip will get degraded? Physical, physical. Okay, so now it is- Corporation turn. Corporation turn. So. This one is going to investigate here and your chip goes back because they're just facing that way. They can't see that way. And even if they were, their full awareness isn't yep. to that point. So he just gets two. This has now been investigated. So now the corporation network activate pings. Yep. We are going to go one, two, three onto a hub and one, two, three there. One is on a hub. So we will roll this and that increases the network level. They've activated their pings. They advanced the threat. I think we're ready to start me. Yeah. So I'm gonna alter the burn cycle, put in that physical chip there, get rid of that. Oh, I forgot to route power at the end of my turn. Okay. And I'm just gonna spend four, go down to six, and just get two more advanced dice. Smart. So I'm up to three advanced dice. I can have a maximum of five. And I can have a maximum of three, which is why on my turn now, when I route power, I'm actually gonna drop down two. And you're actually routing at the beginning of your turn. I am routing at the beginning of my turn. I'm gonna drop down two which is going to increase one of my three advanced dies to an elite die. Boop. Now, Nifty. I'm ready to make my dice pool, which is getting pretty gnarly looking. But what are you gonna do? Like, you don't... I just wanted to hold them. <laughs> I just wanted to hold all of the dice. I've never gotten to hold this many dice. You wanna get some cardio in the elevator? 
Yes. Okay, so um, you get to move. I'm not going to move at all. Give me three network cards. You're not going <laughs> to walk around in the elevator? <laughs> no, just give me three network cards. Which is the maximum that you can have on a turn. <sighs> yes. So that so is all. Cycle me moves. all the way there. I will discard these at the end, but maybe I can try to get one of them over the course of this. So can I? I mean, just bits just going to come out and keep me some company until the end of your turn. Because you have the movement. We're just going to talk outside the elevator. I don't have the you... movement. I use networks. Get bit back in but there. It was the, okay. I did network actions, man. Keep Why'd bit you in the roll elevator. All those dice? Because I've never had that many dice okay. to roll before. So I'm on my network phase already. Just stand out in the hallway alone. So I'm going to transfer in. I'm going to go in here. And then the first push of the physical, I'm going to go here. And that activates safe mode, which is move each ping on the network to an unoccupied node. I'm going to move this one here. Boot any pings that can't be placed, which I've already done. So there we go. And then I'm going to go to this purple here. And then I'm going to go to this hub here and gain a power. So I need to degrade the burn cycle. We'll see what happens. Number two, my lord. So for my turn, I don't even need to roll because all I need to do is get in the elevator. So I'm just going to go one, two. And then I will take a network card. On the second level, purple stun any net stun any guard in play, which doesn't really do anything for us. So you're gonna because we're about to your go network upstairs. actions. Yep. Yeah. I'm green. So you're green. So you're gonna go to purple, purple, and then you're going to go to purple again. Purple again. So now we need to degrade the burn cycle. One cycles goes to this. that second yep. one. There we go. And now it is time to reset for the second floor because we are all in the service elevator ready to go up. And you know what? The last thing we're gonna do before we close is we're gonna stun this guard in play because we went to a second layer purple. We're just gonna stun him. That was spiteful. That was spiteful. So as you can see, I have set up the second floor as needed. This is based off of this floor plan book. Floor plan book? Floor. Floor plan book. Floor plan, floor plan book. There are a few things that are different between both the floor plan book and then what the captain and the scenario dictate. So in this, we actually have the captain chip instead of a regular level one or level two. And they will be moving towards bit in their movement. Unfortunately, they yes. will be going aggressively after our command module. The next thing that we have to discuss is the fact that we are in a dangerous spot. We are. No. We have a high threat level and we need to deal with it. Now we need to discuss what we have to do. Yes. So our objective on the second floor is again, to lower the thermostat, make the humans chilly. So we need to shut down the furnace in either the dynamo room, the storage room, or the waste room. Yes. The most logical, I think, strategically would be the dynamo room that we're all right next to. Probably so. Now we are all Probably in the service so. elevator because burn cycle has such great attention to architectural detail in their office crawlers that the elevator moves straight up, the stairs come straight up, all the safe zones stay because they're just stairs and elevators and stuff. After we go through and lower the thermostat, we need to make our way to this executive office, blow out the wall at the back, and jump out to our robot helicopter and make a daring action movie escape. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome if we can do it. Yeah. You already had a initiative card or yes. an imperative card, and I had to draw a new one because we're on a second floor. And so I think that we should get just, rid of them. Yes, just take Because the we one, don't want to yeah. take the blackout hit. Yep. So we take the one power hit to discard our imperative. So I drop down to eight. I drop down to five. And now we need to get going. So we're gonna do the corporation turn. Security units activate. He moves one, one two, two, three, three four, four to get close to these doors, these doors, and bit, unfortunately. And then he doesn't. One, two, three. And now the bulldog does not move, mm -hmm. but has really high like, awareness. Really high awareness. Really high awareness. <laughs> 10, which gets him all the way to here, I believe. Yeah. And next thing we have to do is activate pings. We're going to go one, two, and we're going to go one, and we resolve this die once for the amount of pings that are on hubs. And that adds another ping to the core, it's okay. which is just lovely. And then now we're going to advance threat, which goes to 21. And now I move. We all need to be in here. So if I have enough movement, I might as well also bring bit in there. And hopefully there's no guards in there. Lots of rolls. So I'm actually going to use all three of these to increase my pressure chamber. 
And then I'm gonna use all of these, which is an excessive amount that I don't even need to count. And I'm gonna move one, two, having swapped there. And now we're gonna see what's in there. Mainframe, that just makes this a mainframe terminal. We which don't have enough actions to use we it. We don't have enough actions to use it, but it's nice. It's nice that it's an option. Thankfully, there's no guard in here. That's one, two. I've got eight. I, it, I have too much. I'm gonna move in here for three more, move in bit here and get bit out of the way and then see what this is. You have a battery pack. Once per turn when rolling for an AP check, your agent may include this die in the roll to gain additional. Oh, that's really good. Before I move to network and to routing power and stuff like that, I instead of bringing bit in here, when we reboot, because of this corrosion upgrade, it's only each room that is occupied by bots adds corresponding chips. Not, not so with, every bot. With both of them in here, we're only getting the value of having that one room. So we only get two chips. Which we really need more with yes. how close we are to the wire. So instead of bringing bit into the mainframe terminal, because you'll be able to move bit on your turn and you can yeah. bring them in here for our objective. I'm just going to move bit into here and leave them in there. But yeah. I am going to see what's in that room. Power. Gain power. I am okay with Good that. Roll. That bumps me to nine. And so the next thing I'm going to do is not do anything in there. And we're going to move to my network phase. I'm going to move one to the purple right there in the third layer. And then that's it for the network phase. Before we degrade, you're gonna have to reboot. Yeah, this is. That's going to, that's going to degrade. So yes. you're gonna have to reboot, but we want as many actions as possible. Right. So I might as well, I just got power. I might as well drop down three and drop down bit one mm -hmm. and pay for another slot. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go. So that we can get that in there. Yes. And then now once we have degraded and now it's your turn, we'll get rid of that and we're gonna rebuild this, but we're gonna have some extra tokens yeah. which will be useful. Yep, so these go away and I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave two of those up there because we're gonna get two for this room. Two blue. There we go, two blue. Those and now we need blue. to build the yep. general and captain's one. So we have three general and one captain. There you go, I'll let you draw. Ah, oh, I always like putting the captain first so that if you get it roll higher, you can get them out of the way. I always like to draw the captain first so you can, <laughs> I always like to try the captain first. <laughs> I always like to try the captain first. <laughs> There we go. Let's try to do a magic trick where the captain went away. So it is now my turn. You're up. Oh, we I've, advance by two, which yes. would advance the threat even more for imperatives, but we got rid of those intuitively. Now, first thing I'm going to do is use my free action to blow a hole in this wall so that we can just come back out here. Smart. Go out that wall. Smart. So that is the last time that I can Actually, do that. Actually, real quick, one more retroactive thing. When we shut down the furnace, mm -hmm. any more movement in there loses power. So I I had a ton of movement. Yeah. I would like to actually have picked up the equipment and ended here so that when I leave, I'm only gonna lose one power instead of losing yeah. three. Because you had like 12 movement. I had a ton. Okay, cool. I'm okay with that, I'll allow it. Thanks. Okay, so now I need to roll should I do, go ahead and degrade one of these or swap one of those just to have a free movement? Hold swap it. out one of them okay. and we'll see how that works for us. Okay. We need seven and you get two. So you got a definitely enough, enough to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on the heater spot. I'm about to turn down the thermostat. It requires a roll of four to turn the thermostat off. <sighs> oh. Oh. So you get this one, which can save for a later action, yep. which we have. Yep. And then you have just turned off the furnace, which is making it very cold in there. So now I'm going we to We also get here. two power each by getting yes. the turn down on the furnace. If I forego my fourth action, does the captain activate? Yes. Darn it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Captain activates. So, That's okay though. Okay. So there's a one. Bits so out. Bits, bits out. And then you can do a network card and maybe we could get something yeah. else from it. And so the captain means everybody moves the way that they're facing. Okay, a level three green. I'm not gonna do that because I've got to do level two purples. But we're gonna at least get the threat down by one, which is helpful because all the other ones are just single moves. You're gonna go to purple okay. and you're gonna hop here. Yep. So we're gonna do network now. Yep. You're gonna hop to purple. Yep. You're gonna go here and, and decrease threat, which yep. is nice. We're actually there. And then you're gonna go two Just more two spaces. More, yep. One, two. Okay, so now we need to degrade the burn cycle. Anything, Anything but, but a one. one. Uh, 
two. I'll That's take it okay. two. And now we are at the point where I don't we want need to, to do the security unit activation. He's going to move one, two. Well, let's go one, two, three. And then he's going to move one, two, three, because they swap. And then four down to this door. And that gets him inside a room, which means his patrol yeah. will no longer be happening. And so they we they activate pings now. So they're going to go one, two, three. And then they're all transferring mm. out. Oh, dear. But that's good because that will stop me. And yeah. then I can move in and decrease threat yeah. and get some other stuff. So that's not bad, actually. And then we advance the threat, which is one, two. <laughs> Looking rough. As long as one of us can decrease threat, we have one more round to do this. We, we, we could maybe we can maybe pull this out. Yeah. All right. So it is now my turn. So I'm going to use all eight of my dice. Just you and bit. And just. both of these and this. And you I just need to move. Skedaddle. Now you're gonna. Oh lose. wait, 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 wait! Swap that out with a utility. That also saves us from like we know we're gonna have a physical later. Yeah. And I you think I can get, get out of here. The door so that you can use this action to unlock. Yes, I think I've got it. That's eight, ten. So I've got fourteen moves. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That drops my power down. Because of the. Yeah. The the scenario Six, when you move in that room. 9, 10, 11, 12. I have two more. So one, two. And then I'm going to make that guard aware of me because he's aware of me for sure. And he's also aware of bit, which is okay. But it gets bit further away from crucible. And then now I'm going to reveal a keypad. So this is your just your second And I get to turn. ignore one voltage. Another one, the voltage just means you take a damage? I take a power. I think That's, I'm just going to take the power. Yeah, I'd take the power. Save my save your dice. At dice, and now this this is open, and I get to move through yep. here, and that goes with me, and then I get to see what's in here. Anything but security. Mainframe terminal. Fine cool. with that. I can physically move again, and I don't. I might as well. I only get two actions, and I don't have enough strength Wait. to bust okay. through right now. So I could move one, two, three with my this chamber dice. Yeah. And then use the last action to get this and just see if we can get a good benefit. So I'm just gonna use this and not, and save not, that. Yeah, save your chamber dice. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing to do. Four, which is fine. So one, so this stays here. So one, two, three. Set this die to five. When acquired on your turn, you may reduce this die by one to re-roll an action die, discard when this die reaches zero. The last thing, first off, they're gonna move here and then here because of the, the captain yep. ship. And then I'm going to resolve this mainframe terminal at zero. Anything that reduces threat. Reduce, reduce threat, threat by, by two. two. That is huge. Oh. Huge, one, that two. That might be what saved us the game. That might have just saved the game. Did you move it back to? I moved it back to. It was it already feels real high it, still. It, it, that was that was massive. that's good thinking that to not massive. just move bit in the room. Your was judgment massive. was better than mine. Okay, uh, we got lucky too. Yeah, we got lucky too. All right, so I've moved all of my dice. We are at the networking phase. I'm gonna move to the next purple spot, but that's gonna hit this ping. So I'm gonna boot this Send ping. It back. And that's gonna drop me from four to three here. Then I'm gonna transfer in for free. And then I'm going to move to the core, which is going to increase my power by one. It's going to increase my uh, network level by one. It's gonna decrease threat by one. And then it's gonna send me back to the access point. And then for my third action, I'm gonna transfer in and move one. And then I'm gonna move one again for the captain dice. Then I'm going to degrade, degrade the burn yeah. cycle. And I would love to roll a four or a question mark. Three works. I'll take three. It's better than one or two. I'm going to go ahead and... Route oh, power, you to, don't need to, need to but this. you're going to alter that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, get a movement. So... You need to me, get out of there. Yeah, you're going to take two power hits. Yeah, let me just... I'm just going to roll these just in case. See what happens. Yeah, see what happens. So... Two, four, six, six seven, Take this eight. back. So... One, one two, two, three. three take four, two. four five, six, seven, eight. I am now in front of bit. And aware. And then you are taking two power hit from moving from in moving that, that room. room. Yep. Now you can just do an unoptimized move action. I'll, I'll just move. I'll you can take up. a network card because you're already going to move in and you don't have enough dice to yeah. blow the wall up. Okay. Set the CEO's network level to two. 
Okay. All right, so you've done that as an unoptimized network. Now you're gonna do a physical action. These could be turned into one or you could keep I'll them. I'll keep them, so. And then that's. So that's nine. Nine. So one, two, three, four. Uh-uh. Oh. Four, five. Wait, it was one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and it stays there and then. Six, seven, eight, nine. There, because then I'll be the one to blow yep. out the wall. So we're all in that room and that bulldog is very curious as to what's happening in the executive office because all of us are in there. And then you have effectively moved and now you can take a yeah, network, network action, see yep. if it's useful. Destroy the closest wall to your agent. This does not cause you to oh, You have got to be kidding me. If we had just retroactively, no, but that's we're not level going to three. No, no, that's either. level three. I'm going to be on level two because I want to decrease threat. Real quick though, Daniel, the last thing we, we didn't do the captain ship, but the only person yeah. that would have activated is just that hamster who moves down. And then now we're onto your network phase. So bring it all the way back to one and you're here. So and go so you're going to go purple, purple, which decreases yes. threat. I'm going to go to blue. Which is here. Yep, I'm going to go purple again is here. Do you want to transfer in and gain a power? Yeah, I'll transfer in and gain a power. Transfer then I'm going to skip the rest. Okay. So now you need to route power, which you're not going to do, and you're nope. going to degrade the burn cycle, which you are going to do. Which I'm going to right roll there. a four. Are you? I promise. A five. It's okay. Just gets rid of one of our physical actions. Okay. And those now, aren't important right now. Those aren't valuable mm -hmm. at all. Okay. So the first thing, we have three different awareness chips, all of which need to be investigated right now. And so he's gonna move one, two, three, four, and that's gonna push, once he comes into the room, the invest he's gonna push the awareness onto everybody. And then he's going to attack me, which is going to bump my power down by two. And then he's done. So then Crucible has to move and go one, two, three, four. Because Crucible is moving well, towards awareness. And towards one of these people. And then yeah. now he has to move one, one two, two, three. three. These can all flip back over. The security phase is done. That patrol doesn't patrol because they're inside. We move to activating the pings, which are gonna go one, two, three, and then one, two, three. And they're not on hubs, so they're gonna transfer out. Okay. So now we Advanced have- Advanced threat, yeah. 22. We might be able to do this. I think we can, because all you need to do is blow a hole in the wall. Just put the pressure on me. So we need to- Cycle that out so yep. that I have four full actions. So I'm, I'm gonna take a move action where I'm just gonna decrease my casing pressure chamber down two, to where I don't have to roll any okay. dice. And I'm gonna move there. Okay. And then now I'm going to take a AP check of 10. This Ooh. has to be at least 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then look, I'm gonna do, do you this AP some? check oh. on the battery pack. 10, 10 11. And then I'm gonna increase this just because. I thought you rolled nine. And that's gonna be, ugh, it's gonna be there, which is gonna blow this wall open. And then I'm gonna get to move out with a free action, which takes my awareness to right there. Hold on, oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I'll move bit because bit is still in. in there. Yeah. Well then here. No, 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 you no, no, no. it's you, fine, it's fine. No, you look, do you. look, look, you look, do, look, look, hey. I'm not gonna escape. Now look at you this. You don't have any dice left. I, but I have movement. Okay. And I have an optimized movement. Okay. So look, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bust the wall out. I'm gonna look at this bulldog and be like, watch this. And then I'm gonna do a swap action for one move, swap me and bit. And then I'm gonna do the other move to push bit That's out. That's two. That's two. And then I'm gonna use my casing down to one to go one, two. And we are- Out of the building. Out of the building. Oh. So I've escaped. You have escaped. So you are now out of the building. Your turn ends immediately when you exit the building, but you still do degrade the burn cycle. Five. We'll roll a five and it will degrade one of the two utility okay. chips. So I'm going to start here. All I need to do. You just need to get out of there. I just need to get out of there. Somehow Almost. roll at least a three. <laughs> you got way less. Than I well, you got have. really bad. I rolled, over I rolled six. So you go one, one two, two three. three. And all of our awareness is left yeah, here. And this bulldog is, just, is like, did you guys see that? I feel like there were robots here just a second ago. <laughs> there were, and then they jumped out. So so we won with three threats. Narrow. Left. Yes. Narrow that was, victory. Yes. There were a lot of ways that could have gone south. Also, the fact that we were here and we're able to get to this room quickly 
Fine. That first floor, yeah. we intentionally ended here because we it said we, we needed to be we in the be same in room. Place. But if we had gone to different safe rooms, yeah. this would have spawned right next to the captain. So if I had brought Bit here, where the captain goes to the closest... Yes, it would have been terrible. Yes, that would have ended in travesty. So replayability of burn cycle... Is remarkable because there's a ton of operations yeah. across three different all corporations. three corporations. I think there's at least like 10... There's, Some of them, yeah. there's one, two, and three, four stuff. So you can play lighter to more complex. You can play different complexities, different length of game. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you're not even counting the complexity or the difficulty that you adjust, and then also the length, you every bot plays differently. Yeah. Not only as a bot, but as a command module. Yeah, I feel like in the world of office crawlers, this one really takes the cake as the most versatile, the most dynamic, and the most replayable. And the most architecturally accurate yes which is what when you when i play office crawlers yes. that's how i want them to be yes no this was and really when i enjoyable. play dungeon crawlers i i hope that they take notice of the geology of the area and make it accurate too like every I, time i play a dungeon crawler i'm so frustrated that the mechanical rope and pulley limestone, lifts there's shift when you move room to room it's just it just it's, doesn't make any yeah. sense to me so, but this was this was great? Yes, well done, Chip Theory Games on your accurate office crawling. And I mean, your your onboarding into the Burn Cycle experience has been really like like really recent. Yes. So like, how much are you enjoying it? Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Like, production quality is an amazing game. It is, and it doesn't seem like it should have been that hard. Yeah. Like you're going in, you're just turning turn off, off the thermostats. thermostats, you're going to the elevator, you're going up, turning off the thermostats in the second floor, and then blowing a hole in a wall and jumping out. And there's all kinds of different missions and stuff. There's some where you're going and activating terminals, there's yeah. some where you're doing, your, your objectives are on the network, and they're different based on player guide. It's just the, the replayability and the depth of play in this is awesome. It's really, really fun. No, I had a great time. We'll leave some links down below. If you want to learn more about this game, you can check that out. Mm -hmm. But I had a blast. I can't wait to explore more of this game over the course of, you know, the next few months if we have any opportunity to. And I, I really enjoyed it. I yeah. had a great time. And Me too. You, you feel like you're always winning until you get really close to the end of the threat. Yeah. And then you feel like you're not right. even close to winning. Yeah. And you're able to kind of eke it out there at the end. That was really satisfying. It was, it was Jumping out the window. Game. That was good. Yep. So thank you so much for watching. Again, like Evan said, we'll leave links below to where you can find all of this. And until next time, we'll see you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.